Hi, welcome back once again. My name is Jitendra Kumar Shah. I am a CGMP Compliance Consultant, Trainer and Auditor from NADH Plus GXP Compliance Services. And today we are going to discuss about the topic Continuous Improvement. Now you will ask me why it is required. My dear friends, remember you have a harmonized guideline that is the ICH. Right? Oh, everyone is aware about the ICH guideline. That ICH Q10 Pharmaceutical Quality Management System, PQS. As per that guideline, the continuous improvement is very, very important and many companies even do not have SOP for continuous improvement. For the sake of continuous improvement, the justifications are connected with respect to the management review meetings or the change control systems or practices. These are all given as justifications. But actually, the point is, do you have the procedure or practices for a continuous improvement? Many companies, they have a SOP for continuous improvement plan, CIP. But most of the companies, they don't have the practices and procedure for continuous improvement. So that is the reason I am here to discuss about the continuous improvement, the heart of quality management because it is a requirement of ICH Q10. You can go through the guideline, you will understand the ICH Q10 in detail where there is a separate requirement, special requirement for a continuous improvement. So, you can have different strategies. Most of the time, people will say that these are uh, why it is the part of the uh, pharma. Most of the time, you know, the, this uh, PDCA, Plan Do Check <coughs> Act, or Kaizen, or Six Sigma, or Lean, these are some methods through which you can show that or you can have a continuous improvement in your organization. Now you will ask me why the you need to have a SOP for continuous improvement plan. The reason is, suppose I am working in my organization and suppose some good improvement or some good idea came in my mind. But by one or multiple reasons, you cannot implement that idea. Because you need to have some finance, you need to have some resources, you need to have some different requirements. So you may not able to implement that idea. But that idea is really important with respect to the improvement in the quality systems or the process or the product. Now in that case, you are not raising the change control also. So suppose tomorrow I am leaving the job, then whole this idea will be lost but if you have a continuous improvement plan procedure if that idea is recorded in the CIP or continuous improvement plan then at least not today but at least periodically it will be evaluated and where the ideas can be taken for further improvement so many companies they have the practices or procedures even the observations are also tackled through the or handled through the CIP because suppose if observation is there and if you are planning to implement some kappa then before implementation of kappa you can refer the idea given in the continuous improvement plan so that you can have an ideological methodology where the multiple ideas can be considered or can be clubbed to have a proper action plan or the kappa so this is also uh, the benefit of the continuous improvement plan in uh, many organization so you can have method one, plan, do, check, act. So you have to plan, then do the, you can implement the change, then you have to check whether the change is uh, uh, correctly implemented or not, and then you have to act. So basically if you see here PDCA cycle, this is nothing but the change control. I am just making you aware about how simple things are there. The, these are all the, you know, the lean terminologies, but I am making you in an easy language. See, in change control, you are planning the change, right? You plan the change. Then you, after approval, you implement 
interchange. Correct? Then you, after implementation, you are not closing it. What you are doing? You have to evaluate the data. So after change, you are evaluating the data. And whether it is uh, it is successful or it is adversely impacting on the system that is evaluated. And when it is uh, uh, successful, then you can close the change control. Right? You got my point? So this is PDCA is nothing but whole, you can say a part of the change management system. Simple thing, systematic way, uh, explanation with respect to the PDCA cycle. The next is Kaizen. It emphasizes small continuous daily improvements. Small continuous daily improvements. Involves everyone from top management to frontline employees. So what happened? If some activity need to be implemented, so what you, you need to do? You, have, you need to break down into multiple actions. Now for example, for same activity, I will take a simple example. Suppose you want to implement a practice or some suppose let us say SOP. Simple example I am taking you to make you aware. Now, if you want to revise the SOP, immediately can you revise the SOP? No, there are some steps. What are the steps? First step is raise the change control. Then approve the change control. Then once approval, then revise or make the draft SOP. Once the draft SOP is made, then you have to review it whether it is correct or not. Once it is reviewed, then you have to sign off or approve or finalize. That SOP need to finalize. Once that SOP is finalized, then you have to provide the training. And once training is there, then you can implement the SOP. Right? So there activity is one, but you are breaking that activity into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different small, small steps. That is nothing but the Kaizen. Very simple things. So this is what is used in developing the many computerized systems. So when the computerized systems are developed, these all small steps or small action plans are put in that. Okay? So this is the way you can say here that the small, small steps you can consider continuously for the daily improvements. So if you are considering some improvement practices or some, uh, you know, the uh, 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 improvement practices with respect to the even the management or the uh, uh, subordinates or the employees, you can very well use the Kaizen. The next is Six Sigma. Basically, it focuses on reducing the variation and improving the quality. Now you remember that there is a FDA guideline on process validation. Hope oh, you have one to FDA means it is a US FDA guideline. They are always the discussion is about the reducing the variability. Always discussion about the variability. So please don't don't think that you know this Kaiser Six Sigma PDCA is not relevant to pharma. Please understand this. Everything is with respect to the quality improvement only. With respect to the continuous improvement in the quality. Very simple. All the guidelines are moving or working with each other with the same expectations only. Use the statistical methods to identify and eliminate defects. Again, I am telling you, please refer the USMDA requirement for process validation guideline by USMDA. Same guidelines, same expectations are here in the uh, Six Sigma. So that is the reason I am telling you, Please understand the requirements very clearly. You will get the idea about the continuous improvement linked with your CGMP guidelines. Many companies, what happened? They have a separate team for Kaizen. 
so they independently are doing my suggestion is they have to intermingle they have to mingle with the different different departments who are responsible for quality so that they can have the sop in line with the requirement and also complying this all requirements right the fourth is a lean now here you can see a to maximize customer value while minimizing the waste so you have to reduce the waste you have to uh, maximize the value to the uh, customer streamline the processes improve efficiency and quality again this is with respect to the quality okay and you can see here streamlining the process means your process whatever method, analytical method cleaning method manufacturing method it should be the robust robust method right this is all the expectation here under lean so that you can improve the efficiency simple requirements are there but you need to understand the clearly so i am today uh, i am discussing this topic for all of you the next is how you can implement the continuous improvement in the organization simple set the clear goals identify the improvement engage your team measure the progress and sustain the improvement now here what happened most of the organizations they set the clear goals very good they identify the improvements where you can improve in the process practices uh, in process controls vendor controls you know they 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 identify the improvement they even involve and engage the team also they periodically even the progress is are measured but the improvement are not sustained improvements are not sustained so you have to sustain the improvements whatever you are doing in your organization if you are going back with the improvement if you are going back maybe you know due to the some reasons like the 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 result of that particular improvement may be deteriorates to the product or the process or quality systems and all or maybe inadvertently impacting on the practices and procedures and all you need to go back no problem but of course through some change management only because this change management is also the part of the ICH Q10 guideline remember this one point always this change management again is a part of the icsq team guideline so you need to comply this uh, continuous improvement and you can implement the continuous improvement by this five steps simple steps are there from there you can comply this requirements right so what are the benefits of a continuous improvement the benefits are very clear enhance quality so the quality will be enhanced or the improved for better products and services increase efficiency so the efficiency will be increased and reduce the waste but now here remember that the efficiency increase does not mean that it it should cross the limit of the equipment or the processes please understand this if you need a specific time to manufacture or if you need a specific time for the cleaning operation then that time has to be given you cannot consider under the increase efficiency that you are reducing the time yes you can reduce the time by adding some additional resources you can reduce the time by going with the automation no problem at all you can go with the automation or you can put some resources also no problem but with the same resources with the same practices you cannot just pressure you cannot just put a pressure to increase the efficiency please understand this very important point employee engagement so it is not only on the paper base some companies they prepare very good documents colorful documents charts and all but employee engagement plays a very important role if employees are not involved then 
definitely it is of no use completely no use customer satisfaction delivers higher value to customers higher value to customers sorry i put a uh, you will you will like you will look it look like it did it is cut it is not cut i was putting the underlined so customer satisfaction and the final is a competitive advantage so keep the organization ahead in the market so my point here to explain all these things is you know there is always the uh, benefits of uh, continuous improvement in the organization these are the four steps are four methods are there and uh, how you can implement that is also i discuss hope everything is clear to all of you if you have any questions then definitely you can uh, contact us through the uh, uh, you can put in the comment section or you can contact us if you are interested in more learning in the specifically the pharma prospective learnings and definitely we will conduct the learning or training for you so this is what from my side hope you understand all these things right continuous improvement if you have any questions please put your questions on the uh, comment section i will respond to your questions see this some sort of information i am getting from the different sources and that information i am converting into the video form and uh, and uh, making it as a learning module or learning things so that everybody will understand the overall scenario about the topic right so please i request all of you to subscribe the youtube channel because it is absolutely free of cost subscribing the youtube channel is absolutely free of cost the benefit of subscribing the youtube channel is if any learning video you miss then you will get at least notification and you can go through that video afterwards also absolutely no problem with that so this is what the benefit for the subscribing the youtube channel and if you really like this efforts please you can like the video and yes i always request all people to share this link to your colleagues so that they will also get benefit from these learning videos that is what from my side and i always request all the pharmaceutical professionals all the pharmaceutical colleagues to ensure all time compliance and this is what our the uh line for everywhere you know the closing line for everywhere with our organization and the gsp compliance services because our services focus on the ensuring the all time compliance we don't focus on the short term plans this is what from my side thank you thank you so much and ensure all time compliance thank you so much